Welcome, I'm Dana Schlegenhaft and thanks for joining us on Downtown Now. The 30 minute show you're about to watch is part of a community supported, community driven storytelling project by the nonprofit Downtown Bentonville Inc. Now our team works year round to build and promote a welcoming and lively downtown Bentonville through experiences, education, and storytelling. We do the big welcoming events that you experience in downtown Bentonville, like First Friday and Farmer's Market. Last year, of course, events were put on hold in our region and our team launched Downtown Media. It's a storytelling platform and you can see our videos on social media before movies just down the street at Skylight Cinema and Saturday mornings right here on KWA. We want to share stories about exceptional people, exceptional experiences and businesses in our community. And we believe that authentic storytelling can help us all grow and learn together. Here's a look back at a few of the stories we've covered in the past year. It started in April of 2020 with a GoPro camera. Our community was navigating the COVID-19 pandemic and downtown Bentonville Inc. was forced to use our vast platform to share important information. So we hit the ground running. We shared stories about exceptional individuals in our city like local farmer Dennis McGuire, coffee entrepreneur Mauricio Guerrero, artist David Gomez, and dancer Mega Rao. We conducted live interviews with local medical professionals and community leaders. We shared music, broadcasted concerts, and rode along with the Women of Oz. We announced a new dive bar coming to downtown. We questioned when will life return to normal post-COVID, and we explored relaxing escapes just minutes from the hustle and bustle of our city center. We filmed in kitchens and bars and shared the culinary boom happening in Northwest Arkansas. We sparked creativity at the Amazium, and we took off for a downtown adventure on electric scooters. We showed you what to expect at the world's first bikeable building, Ledger. We explored the new Osage Park and promoted can't miss exhibitions at the Momentary and Crystal Bridges. Whether you live in downtown Bentonville, somewhere across Northwest Arkansas or even beyond, we hope you enjoy our community supported and community driven weekly show and gain the information you need to make informed decisions, celebrate the arts, champion our downtown business community and grow together through individual unique perspectives. In 2012, Sammy Laney lost her best friend Deborah to suicide. Deborah had been a foster child and survived abuse in her childhood. After the loss of her friend, Sammy knew she had to step in and help other foster children in our community. Ignite host Caitlin Jackson and the students of the Bentonville Schools Ignite program introduce us to the Deb Project and their mission to love and support local children in the foster care system. We had the chance to speak with the inspiring Sammy Laney, the founder and executive director of the Deb Project. Hello, my name is Sammy Laney. I am the executive director and founder of the Deb Project, deserving, enriched, and blessed. The Deb Project started in 2012 when I lost my girlfriend Deborah to suicide. We were best friends growing up. Uh, she was adopted when I was in third grade. Uh, she came to my house and we hung out and we played together and went to school together and we were just best friends until March 2012 when she took her life. And I had no idea until that day um, that her life was different and foster care children's lives are different. Um, and that's what um, inspired me to make a difference and um, to change some lives for foster in the foster care community. So anytime a foster child comes into care, that foster parent can come in and we offer anything on our retail floor. So they get five tops, five bottoms, or five outfits, pajamas, anything seasonal. So if they need a coat, they get a coat. Um, pajamas, um, whether it's short pajamas or long pajamas, swimsuit, shoes, anything on our retail floor. Then we have two pantries. We have a food pantry and a hygiene pantry. In the hygiene pantry, we have anything from socks and underwear to soap and toothpaste and toothbrush. And those pantries need to be filled all the time for those kiddos. I believe that the Deb Project impacts the foster care community in such a way that our foster care parents come in, they feel at ease to talk with us and speak with us, and they know that they're going to get the love and care that they need just 
Um, just knowing that we have the items available. During the month of August, the Deb Project assisted 161 children in the community. They gave 7,393 items off their retail floor, along with 5,116 items from both their hygiene and food pantry. We would love for people to come in and support us. Uh, we need all the help that we can get. Um, we have a retail store that people can come shop. We have volunteer program. Uh, we're all volunteers. Nobody up here uh, gets a paycheck. We want to put 100% of all the profits that we um, get off of our retail floor right back into our community, to our foster care community. If you don't have time to volunteer, come shop. Um, if you don't want to shop, donate. Uh, clean out your closets, donate. We love that. Um, if you want to organize a group uh, to help, um, Sunday school classes, Girl Scouts, uh, anybody can organize a group um, to help and they do donation drives. We greatly appreciate all of that. If you want to stay updated on what the Dev Project is doing or their latest sales, you can check out their Facebook page or their website. Of course, you can find all of our stories on downtownbentonville.org or on Facebook at Downtown Bentonville. Up next, Brooke Beerhouse will go riding with the Hangry Peddler, and she'll show you how you can share the love with our community every Thursday evening right here in downtown Bentonville. Stay with us. We'll be back after this break. Sometimes it's the simple things. Enjoying family and friends. Community. Sometimes you just need to ride and hike. Reconnect. Experiencing the wonders of art and imagination. Celebrate. Bentonville, Arkansas is here for you today. Bentonville, Arkansas will be here for you tomorrow. Do more here. Welcome back, my name is Brooke Beerhouse and I am one of the hosts at Downtown Now. I am an award-winning documentary filmmaker, reporter, and visual storyteller who covers a lot of stories centering on taking folks out of downtown Bentonville and into the Ozarks, exploring the trails, and enjoying the natural state. One of those locals includes Joseph Wynn, someone you may know as the Hangry Peddler. Now, I wasn't hangry when I met Joseph, but he and I definitely needed some coffee. So we biked from downtown Bentonville out into one of my favorite trails in the region, had some coffee, and he told me more about why he loves Northwest Arkansas and some of his favorite spots in the region for food. Some of you might be familiar with my guest today. He goes by the name Hangry Peddler on Instagram, and he has created this amazing community of people in Northwest Arkansas who are looking for eateries, restaurants, and the trails here in Northwest Arkansas. And I am so excited to introduce you today to Joseph Wynn. Joseph, because you are the Hangry Peddler, I thought it would be fitting for us to go bike to the trails. What do you think? I'm down, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. So we just got to the rail yard and we had a great little bike ride. Mm -hmm. Now we are going to put our bikes up and we are going to head out onto the Maximus Loop Trail and also the Lasso Trail out in Lake Atalanta, but we'll start at the rail yard. The indicator is this beautiful bridge right here. 
this cedar and it might be weird, but it smells so good. So whenever you come here, take a huge inhale whenever you get right here. Oh my gosh. Smells good, Yeah, right? it smells good. Yeah, yeah. it does. <laughs> it does smell good. <laughs> We're gonna do a little rapid fire question. Are All you ready? right, let's do it. Okay, you've got one day in Bentonville. Where are you gonna eat? One afternoon. Ooh, that's tough. So many good places. Um, uh, the Melier, it's a oh. new place, newish place within the last year or so. Good hamburger, uh, good coffee, good people. Yeah. It's a bike shop. So it's totally me, you know, bikes and food. It's so I would totally food. go there, yep. Awesome, mm -hmm. um, favorite comfort food? Comfort food, um, is pizza a comfort food? Yeah, yeah pizza, I'd say pizza. <laughs> On my feed, you'll see a lot of pizza, a lot of hamburgers, okay. so. what? Well, my profile picture is a pizza in my mouth, so pizza. Um, last bike trail that you've gotten, been on recently? I went to Kohler. Favorite one there is Fireline, so oh. Fireline and Thunderdome. I'm still a newbie at it, but uh, that's my last one I've been on. I used to post pictures on my Facebook page of food and all that so my friends they're all like hey you need to make an instagram page and you know post all your food there and so i was like okay sure i'll do that and then i decided to combine my other love which is cycling you nice. know food and cycling kind of go hand in hand so i was like huh, i should do that and uh, try to combine the two and you know i've done it almost exactly two years now so what keeps you here in this area like what makes it special to you um I'd say my family for sure. That's number one. Uh, I don't. I can't picture myself living anywhere else. I've been in a big city. I've been to Dallas. I lived in Sacramento, California. And when I tell my my friends and other family outside of the state that I love it here, they don't. They're like, "What, Arkansas?" <laughs> but yeah, I love Arkansas. Just the community, and I think like anything that happens, the community like just wraps their arm around you, and just it's all about community and. You know, family to me. So, oh, well, cheers to that and cheers, cheers to finishing cheers. up this hike. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Thank you for having me. We love showcasing exceptional people in our community with big hearts. Bentonville Mayor Stephanie Orman introduces us to For the Love, a local food truck launched amid the pandemic with a mission to feed others and love the community during tough times. It's just another way our residents generously work to build up Bentonville. In early 2020, an idea between three friends quickly became a 501c3 nonprofit with the mission to spread love and feed others. The Bright Marquee serves as a beacon for every member of our Bentonville community. And the delicious smells drifting from the For the Love food truck promise a hot meal for all. It's a mission that began in early 2020 when Jennifer Cristofaro, Melinda Williams, and Meredith Chappie knew that the oncoming pandemic would disrupt lives and potentially leave many in our community hungry and isolated. People need people. We truly believe that. And not only that, but so many people are struggling financially right now. You know, job losses or job cuts, things like that. And so we decided that food naturally creates community and we should buy a food truck and start feeding people for free. Thanks to the support and generous sponsors and volunteers, For the Love launched Neighbor Night, offering a free meal to every member of the community. The people that we're meeting, they maybe they are hungry, but uh, bigger than that, they're just, they need someone to actually ask how their day is going and mean it and to like care about what's happening in their life. So we have to wear masks and do all these things, but we still get to sit down across the picnic table and say like, how was today? Um, and they can count on that every Thursday. We want people that are hungry to come. We want people that are lonely to come. Like we just want to get neighbors together and just to have a good time and kind of forget about their cares and their worries and a place where they can come and be seen and heard and loved. And we just want everybody to like leave well fed, but also just encouraged for the evening. Since it launched in November 2020, the food truck has consistently served over 200 people per week from all walks of life. And that's what's so great about it is um, here on Thursday night, everybody looks the same. No one pays. We all come together. Our kids play together. We laugh. We eat together. We get to know each other. And I think it's just um, broken down a lot of just societal walls and norms of 
you know, who you would normally hang out with or talk to, and all of that is just kind of shattered here, and it just makes it such a beautiful picture. From for the love to a guy who does it all for the music. His name is Jeremiah Pickett, and he goes by the stage name Bang, which stands for Believe, Aspire, Achieve, Now Go. His positivity and warmth will draw you in, and his mission to unite people through music, well, that's a story you need to hear. Dana has more on the story. Raised in Texarkana, surrounded by a close-knit family, Bang says his childhood set a foundation for his music later in life. My grandparents did a really good job of establishing this idea of character and this idea that um, what's cool isn't always right and what's right isn't always cool. And so as a young boy, like that was kind of instilled in me. So as I got older, then it was like, okay, you know, I recognize that my stance might not always be the most popular, but if it's one of uh, like moral uprightness, then that might be the side to take. A bit of an introvert with a talent for penning his emotions, Bang was recruited to move to Northwest Arkansas by his brother, who was living in Fayetteville at the time. As a University of Arkansas student, Bang used music as an emotional outlet. That changed after he and some friends made a mixtape. It kind of got some popularity around campus. And so from that point, I was really wrestling with this tension of, you know, you, you enjoy this, you love it. Other people enjoy it, other people love it. You don't necessarily want to make a career out of this. Bang began doing local shows and released two albums. His music reflects intense emotions, hard conversations, mixed with positivity and lighter topics. A lot of my music is, is um, like I said, like feeling and emotion based. And so like if I watch the news and see like, you know, um, an unarmed black man get killed by the police. And, and everything isn't always like, you know, somber and, and dark and gloomy, but I do see value in addressing and confronting these things in a way that's digestible and in a way that challenges us. I do see value um, in that. But again, like it's not always that. Sometimes it's like, oh shoot, um, I get to go to press room and have mimosas. I'm, I'm gonna make a song about that because I feel bougie and I feel fancy, you know what I mean? Like, Bang says music allows him to explore emotional commonality through our differences. Some of my stuff is like, it's heavy stuff. And so you can really see it on their faces when you just, when you say, you know, I got a song that I did with Bike Rack and I say, um, I'm driving 100 down the highway and my eyes are wide open because when you black, everything you drive looks stolen. And so when you say that line and, and people and people hear it and they're just like, yeah. are you gonna, <laughs> are you can kind of see, like you just did, like you can see like everything just changes. And while aware of the responsibility musicians have to be intentional with the messages that they share, Bang also says he finds that music can be a great force for unity. When you're at a concert, you know, or, or yeah, when you're at an event, for some reason, Democratic and Republican doesn't matter. For some reason, like, this, they, they just don't matter because we're all united and surrounded celebrating like this one thing, which is the music that moves us. Make sure to check out Bang on Spotify. His new album, Wine, Water, and Somebody's Daughter dropped last month. All right, stay tuned and we will be back for more.
Each episode of Downtown Now will feature an exclusive interview with a notable member of our community. And not long ago, we sat down with Stuart Walton to discuss growing up in Bentonville, the growth in our region, and what he envisions for the future of Northwest Arkansas. We also shared a few laughs and a few memories. Here's a fond memory he has of his grandfather, Sam Walton. <laughs> So you brought up Walmart, and, uh -huh. and I, I need to ask about your grandfather. Sure. So back in the 80s and 90s, if, if you grew up in Bentonville, Stewart's grandfather drove around in a very iconic pickup truck that you see a lot in front of the Walmart it's a very museum. pedestrian pickup. It's become iconic. Iconic now, yeah. yes. Back at the time, yes, not so much. Um, I just want to hear a memory that you have of your grandfather, something that's really resonated with you through the years. I have a, I have a lot of memories. Um, even though he passed away when I was 11. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, he... he some, of, some of the most amazing things that I've, I've um, experienced or kind of understood from him have actually come since he's passed away mm -hmm. in, in his book. Uh, there's just some amazing stories and, and lessons and reflections in his book. And one of the things that we did at our family meetings was we took two chapters at a time and my, my dad and his siblings kind of reflected on the stories, you know, as they remembered them that were written in the book. And that was a really uh, kind of moving and uh, incredibly informational even for me uh, kind of experience of learning about who he was and how he thought and how much just passion and energy and sort of uh, you know vision that he had and how you know lovable he was as mm -hmm. well um, but I guess one one memory I have and it's a pretty early one is that we were we would go out and hunt over in Gentry on uh, Lloyd Peterson's farms mm -hmm. out there and Lloyd would uh, feed the quail so they were fat and they couldn't fly very well, <laughs> and uh, seems like that gave you an unfair advantage. <laughs> I, I, I wasn't shooting, but uh, I'm, that's probably not a misstatement, or that's probably correct. I did maybe I should say, but anyway, we were driving um, a later truck, still very pedestrian truck, uh, out there, and it was one of these old Fords that um, you know the speed the speedometer. I think it started at like 10 miles an hour. There wasn't anything below that. Mm -hmm. And I was kind of a perceptive kid and I was like, was sitting on granddad's lap and he's driving. It was like, granddad, can you go five miles an hour? And I remember him saying, uh, well, I, I don't know, it's, it's not on the speedometer. And I was like, why well, didn't on the speedometer? And he's like, well, I just don't think you can go five miles an hour. I just don't think it's possible. <laughs> <laughs> and like, I remember that, I don't know why I remember that story as a kid, but, but sort of now that I've been older and read more about him and understood more about his personality and the company, I think that that was just kind of like how he was. Like he was full throttle all the time. He'd be up, first one in the office, you know, work, hunt, play tennis, have, you know, every day was full, every day was nonstop. He was, I think, very much fueled by his interactions with people, mm -hmm. and I don't think he ever slowed down. I mean, not 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 until the very end, uh, and even then, not really. Um, but I, I do remember hunting with him. I do remember flying with him uh, as a kid, and uh, yeah, it's. I wish I had more memories, but I do treasure the ones I have. Thanks for tuning in, and we hope you've enjoyed this pilot episode of Downtown Now. You can also find our exclusive content on Downtown Bentonville's Facebook, LinkedIn, and Instagram profile pages at downtownbentonville.org, and before every movie at Skylight Cinema. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time.